Okay, first entry. How do we journalize this? Issuance entry and classification entry. What do we debit credit here? Cash we're receiving, right? And then credits, long-term notes payable, right? The classification for what dollar amount here? This would be classify a part that worth 40,000, right? Because every single year we're paying $40,000. So reclassification part represents every single year's current portion of long-term notes. Okay, so there's two entry in the beginning, January 1st, 2014. First is the issuance entry, issuing long-term notes, and then collecting cash you borrowed, $200,000. Okay, but this dollar amount, we're not paying it all together five years from now. We're paying a portion every single year, portion that worth $40,000. So after this issuance entry, we immediately reclassify the part of long-term notes into current portion. Okay, so they still belong to long-term, still belong to liability category, just different types. So current portion of long-term notes, this is a short-term part that will be due every single year, $40,000. Now the last question in this problem asks you to journalize first note payment. So first note payment, since this is a note that signs off January 1st, first note payment, how will we journalize this a year later? So meaning that, is this a note that carries on to the following accounting period? Usually that's the one that's signed off somewhere in the middle of the year. Okay, so what happens at the end is that we are paying off the part of the principal, $40,000, and at the same time we're also paying off the interest, $12,000. Okay, so left-hand side we have interest expense, long-term notes payable, and there's also cash. Okay, these two debit account, cash we're paying $52,000 because a part is $40,000 is principal and then $12,000 is interest accumulated for a year. Okay, we're not accounting for how many months because this is a note that's signed off in the beginning, January. So when it reaches all the way to year end, it's pretty much a year. Okay, some problems may ask you to journalize a payoff entry January 1st. Some problems may be December 31st, so that depends. But usually when we do this interest accrual entry, it will definitely be a note that's signed off somewhere in the middle of the year. Okay, but if it's signed off in the beginning, January 1st, and a part of it is immediately due a year later, sometimes the payment altogether will be made at the end of the year or just the beginning of the first of the following year. Okay, but the point is that we'll no longer be accruing interest for this case if a note is signed off beginning. Okay, because it pretty much doesn't carry on to next year in the middle of next year. It's just immediately due a year later. So this same entry here would happen again December 31st, 2015. But what would be different? Well, the debit account will still be the same, credit account will still be the same, so what's the difference compared this journal entry to the future entry, 2015, December 31st? Dollar amount. Dollar amount is specifically which account? Interest For interest expense, we would use, instead of $200,000, it would be minus $40,000, because remember, we paid off $40,000 in the first year. This journal entry here, we paid off 40000 so the following year when we accumulate interest, it will be only $160,000 times a year interest. Okay, when it reaches 2016, it will be $120,000 times 6% interest. Okay, so on and so forth. So don't forget to reduce the principal amount 
along the years. When you pay off long-term notes, that part, you basically don't accumulate interest on it anymore later on because you paid it off. You don't owe it anymore. Okay, this is the first category of long-term liability. Now we're moving on to mortgages. 